Hi folks, welcome to this video on PNF stretching or properly known as proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. All the time, get asked, do we have to know its full name? Do you know what? Yeah, best learning. Because you never know what you're going to get a mark for and what you're not going to get a mark for. Proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. It sounds like a lot, but if you look at each word, it's not that difficult, is it? Right, has been an essay question. Everything that I'm going to put down here is what got credited for marks last time. But equally, it could be short answer questions that that um, that, you, that come up on, on your exam paper. It could be, how do you do it? And then, you know, why and, and, and exactly what is the science behind it? What are the physiological reasons behind it? Well, we're going to look on this first slide with this first picture is, how do you do a PNF stretch? Right, well, what can we say about it? It's usually, not always, but usually done with a partner. I've seen these kind of stretching done before where there's only been one person and they've used like a skipping rope or a theraband, some of these elastic bands that physio use to pull their own leg back in, uh, into position. But what you basically do is you perform a 30 second passive stretch with a partner. Right, this is then followed by a 10 second isometric contraction. So as you can see from this picture here, the partner is now leaning in. Notice there they were just doing a 30 second passive stretch. Now they're leaning in because this lady is now pushing back against their partner. Okay, so you've stretched the hamstring in this one here for 30 seconds. Now this lady's trying to contract the hamstring by pushing her heel back down, but the partner's not going to let her because he's going to hold the leg still and we get a 10 second isometric contraction. Remember, isometric, the muscle contracts but does not change length. And finally, the partner is then going to repeat the 30 second passive stretch. Okay, now what can we see as a result of this? Well, if you look here, We've got pretty much a 90 degree angle there. Okay, that was that was end of range of movement there. We've then done a 10 second isometric contraction where we've been again about 90 degrees. But look at it here. We've got a steeper angle. More well, an, an obtuse angle there, a more acute angle there. But what we're saying is we have seen an increase in the range of movement. Okay, from that first 30 second passive stretch to the second 30 second passive stretch. So we have definitely seen an increase in the range of movement between the two stretches. So that is how we do a PNF stretch. Okay. So let's now have a look at the science behind it. Now straight away, if you've seen a, if you've watched the video on plyometrics already, you'll see your picture's familiar. And here's the problem: because we're going to talk about a muscle spindle as we did in plyometrics, people automatically confuse the two. Oh, they're the same thing. They're trying to achieve the same thing. They're not. Plyometrics is power development. PNF is about increasing flexibility. It just so happens that they both use a muscle spindle in order to achieve those goals. But that is the only thing that they share in common. Okay, so let's let's, let's just have a look at the last few points in terms of the science behind PNF stretching. During that first thirty second stretch that we did, that your partner did on you, or that partner did on that lady in those pictures. The muscle spindle was activated. Now think back to the plyometric stuff. What does a muscle spindle do? Well, if you've watched the plyometrics video already, you'll know that it detects stretch, or they, sorry, detects stretch and prevent overstretch. So when that lady was being stretched, their hamstring was being stretched uh, by that partner, by a partner, all those muscle spindles were sending impulses up to the cerebellum saying, we are being stretched, we are being stretched, we need to do something about it because I don't want to overstretch and produce or receive an injury. And if you think back to the plyometrics video, what did the muscle spindle then do? It sent an impulse to the cerebellum to create a concentric contraction. Get us out of this, get us out of this overstretch. That's exactly what you're going to do in a PNF stretch as well. So the muscle spindle does exactly the same in plyometrics as it does in PNF. Okay? But the 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 aims are different. What do we then do? In a PNF stretch, is we let the muscle contract. We then perform that 10 second isometric contraction. Now, during this 10 second isometric contraction that follows the first 30 second passive stretch, we activate another structure called the Golgi tendon organ. And as you might expect, if it's a tendon organ, it exists in the tendons. Not there's the muscle. So in the muscle. This is where the muscle spindles are inside the muscle tissue. The Golgi tendon organs 
are in the tendon, the tendons that hold the muscles to bone. During, that, during this 10 second isometric contraction, we now activate a Golgi tendon organ. Now something important is going to happen now. Golgi tendon organs also monitor a bit of stretch, okay? But they also monitor tension. And during this 10 second isometric contraction, quite a lot of tension is going to build up in that muscle. You're pushing back against the partner, you're not moving, they're not moving, and you're contracting for 10 seconds non-stop. So you're going to build up quite a bit of tension inside that muscle. Now what's going to happen is the brain is going to get a little bit confused. In effect is what's going to happen. Why? Because you've, cut, you've had a muscle spindle saying, oh, we're too long, we're too long, we're too long, we're overstretching, there's a risk of injury, contract to get us out of it. And instantly, you've then got a Golgi tendon organ going, whoa, too much tension, there's too much tension, we need to relax a little bit, okay? Because there's too much tension built, there's a 10 second isometric contraction, too much tension in this muscle. So what does the brain do? It, in effect, then ignores both the muscle spindle and the Golgi tendon organ. So it, and it, it's aware that they're there, but it says, I'm not going to listen to either of you because this, this is two conflicting pieces of information. And we call that process autogenic inhibition. So autogenic inhibition occurs. The muscle spindle, even though it's still detecting stretch, is now not being listened to by the brain. And the Golgi tendon organ, even though it's detecting stretch and tension, is no longer being listened to by the brain. And we call that autogenic inhibition. Okay, what is the result? When you do that second 30 second passive stretch, there is now no muscle spindle saying, oh, that's too much, that's too much, we're at risk of overstretch. Hence why you see a rapid increase or a significant increase, sorry, in the range of movement on the second uh, stretch. Because now the muscle, now people often go, well, isn't that dangerous? Because the muscle spindle is, is there to protect you, to prevent overstretch. It is a little bit more dangerous. Okay, hence why PNF stretching is probably carries a slightly high risk of, of injury, and you, you've got to have a partner who you trust that you're not going to push too far. Okay, but the muscle spindle is always a little bit cautious, it never really lets you get to full end of range before it says, Whoa, hang on, that's too far. It always holds a little bit in reserve. But that is exactly how the gut muscle uh, spindles and the Golgi tendon organs work, uh, and how we take advantage of that in order to increase our range of movement through PNF stretching, okay? But obviously, because you're deactivating, in effect, a muscle spin and a Golgi tendon organ, this isn't the best type of stretching to do for a warm-up or anything like that. This is for someone who's got tight muscles, you know, hasn't got very good range of movement, and you want to now try and increase and improve their range of movement to give them better technique, things like that. That's when you do PNF stretching. So the first slide of this was how you do it. The second slide is the science behind it. Both of those together is how you would answer an essay question, but you might get a short answer question on how do you do it or how does it how do you use a muscle spindle to do PNF stretching? That's when you'd use each of these like two slides, these two bite-sized pieces of information. Watch as many times as you need to. Hope it was of use to you. Good luck, folks.